Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joni Young and today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this uh, beautiful uh, old resting place of King Arthur. It is Glastonbury in England. So I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to try and simplify it as much as I can for you so you can follow along uh, at any level that you're at with painting. So let's go over the colors and the brushes that we're going to be using today. A number 11 flat brush. Of course you can use any size flat brush that you feel comfortable with. I'm also going to be using a smaller flat brush. This one's a number six. I'll be using a number two half inch mop brush. This is going to be for the little bushes. And I'm going to be using a good old large blending brush. Here are the colors. I'm going to be using my neon orange, lemon yellow, sap green, Mars black, titanium white, and light ultramarine blue. So we're going to begin this painting with our large blending brush. I've just gotten my brush a little bit wet so the paint can flow out of it easily. I'm going to take my blue, just get it on the end of my brush like this, and I'm going to start pulling back and forth along the top of the canvas. I'm going to take all of that blue now. You'll notice I'm working on a black primed canvas. I didn't go out and buy this. You can just take any old canvas that you have, recycle it by applying a coat of any black paint. Make sure that you dry it off completely first before beginning this painting. I'm now going to pick up white. Without washing my brush, I want to blend the blue in right in with that white. And you guys know that I like to have my sweepy skies, so I pull up lightly like this. Pull and sweep up. I'm going to take just the smallest amount of water on my brush, pick up some more white, any little bit of blue that I have left, and I'm going to continue. If you want to create some little sweeping clouds, you can just do little half circles, make little curls like this. So with this landscape, there's going to be more sky than land, so the ratio is going to be like 70-30. We're going to come right down here. Okay. We might come over this a little bit. We might come up to here maybe with uh, the grass in the foreground. I'm going to continue. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out now. And I'm going to switch over to neon orange and white. So I'm going to take white first and a little bit of orange, that way I don't get all the orange in my white paint. We want to keep that white paint clean. And this is going to look a little bit dark right now. I'll be adding more and more white. Okay, so I'm going to start to softly pull in. on an angle like this, just pulling this up. Pick up more white. Then as this dries, I can add a little bit more white to it when I need to. Um, I'm going to come in with the green foreground now, the first base coat. And then um, we're going to add some little trees back over here with our mop brush. Okay, so I'm going to go to number 11 flat brush. 
take my sap green. So I'm going to come right over here. Push and pull, push and pull. Take a bit of water, bring it up. Slightly on a curve. Just that little bit of a curve adds a little bit more character and perspective. It changes the perspective of your painting. Take more of my green. And I'm going to come right in here. Pick up a little bit of our yellow. We'll go right down to the bottom. Wherever you want it to be a little bit lighter, so right in here will be lighter, you'll pick up some yellow. You can even pick up a little bit of that white. And add a little bit of it right in here. So working wet on wet like this gives it that really soft, buttery blended look. Almost like oil paint. Okay, we're just going to leave that for now. Actually, I'm just going to come right in here. Take a little bit of my sap green. Just add a little bit of a darker line. I might have to come back to this just because it's still wet underneath. And a little bit right in here. All right. Let's begin with our little mop brush. I'm going to take a little bit of black and sap green, tap the two together, and there's going to be some tall trees way back here. And I want them to blend in with the color in the background so they get that faded look to them. So it's a really misty, foggy morning, really early in the morning. And this one's going to come up a little bit higher. You can dust little circles like this around the outside of the tree, making it look really soft and faded. And I'm going to add a little bit more in front, so it's going to be a little bit darker. And then I'll come on an angle like this for where the shadows are falling. I'm going to switch to my little flat brush now. I'm going to take those same colors. I'm just going to add a little bit of 
the background. There's some old ruins, old structure. I'm not sure, I've never been there. Just going by a photo right now. Okay, so it goes up, down like that. And then it goes across. Almost scoops and pulls over. Okay, so I'm going to dry this off and then add some fog, dry brush, some white over top of these. I'm going to be using my large blending brush again. Now you can tint it with a little bit of peach and yellow. That would actually be really nice if the sun's just coming up. It's early in the morning, you get that nice, soft, warm glow. So I'm going to begin down here. Now when we add the structure in the front or in the foreground, it's really, really going to stand out. We really want this to look foggy and hazy. Had a little hair right there. There we go. So the idea with this dry brush layer is to make it look see-through. You want it to be transparent. That's why you don't want to have too too much paint on. And it's easy to take off. You just scumble it away. If you feel like you've got too much on there. I'm going to add some right over here too. Right in here. That looks far away now, doesn't it? I'll just take a little bit off right there to add some shadow. Look, we can still see that blue under. Okay, we'll just add a little bit. A little bit more right in here. Make that look even softer. Soft, soft, soft. That's what we're after. Okay, so we are ready to start adding our structure now. We don't have to wait for this to dry. I'm going to use my small flat brush again. I'm going to come in with black, white, even some of this green, doesn't matter. It's going to be uh, just the first layer here. Kind of watery, not drying this out first, you know my approach. I just like to do things freehand because I love painting. I'd rather use a brush than a uh, pencil and I don't want to measure anything. If you guys want to do that, I have, there's no problems at all, that's totally fine. So I'm going to put this right in, right in the middle. We'll start adding a little line right here. It's an old structure that's fallen apart and there's a few little lumps that go off like this. It's a kind of diagonal. And it goes. Right down like that.
right about here, we're going to have our arch. This line like that on an angle comes down to right about here and it's a little bumpy so you can make slight little wiggles and bumps. And it goes in again. Kind of misshapen a little bit. And then the shadow is going to come out here. And we'll come in with uh, black for that. I'm just going to take a little bit of black and water. Still have like just a dark gray. I'm just going to outline. We can start filling this in just with this first layer of gray and then we'll come in with the black and once we add those shadows and more contrast it's really going to stand out. So what I like about this type of painting is that if you're not really great and accurate at getting straight lines that's okay this is the painting for you then because you don't have to be it's uh, older falling apart and you don't have to be a good a good painter to do this So when it looks a little bit rough like this, kind of like a dry brush and scumble, you get that uh, look and feel texture of that stone. And by using this flat brush like this, it's nice and square. You can come in on the side and just pull, tap and pull. You get those little looks of stones on the edge like that. And we can add a little bit up here too if you want. So easy. Let the brush do the work for you. I always say don't worry too much about it. with a little bit of black right there. We'll just do a few little lines. Very rough. Look at how the shadow, we've barely even done, we've barely even done the shadow yet and it makes such an impact. This one kind of comes like this. Go 
a little bit of water on my brush so that paint flows nicely. We're still using the same dark gray. I'm going to pull this shadow down nice and see through. A few little lines like that. And then go over them, line them in a little bit with either a brush or your finger. Okay, so this is when they're going to come in with a little bit of a darker, a little bit less water, and a little bit more black. So it's like a dark charcoal gray now. And the way the shadow is falling starts here, and then it goes on a slant like this. Just add that a little bit there for some more a little shadow line in there. If you do it just one line at a time, it's really, really easy to follow along. Then we're black and come right down here. And I'm trying not to get too caught up in, in any little details. But the closer you start looking at an image, the more and more your eyes break it down and focus and see more. So it is optional. You can just do the structure completely in silhouette. Or you can follow along with me and do little arches like this. This one you definitely have to do. You don't want to leave this one out. Then we've got shadow that goes down here. I'm going to take my sap green with that bit of charcoal on my brush. Go across like this. We can take it right over. Look at that. This is a dramatic, moody painting. Just take a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. Let's uh, pull in a little bit of that sap green. 
I really want to have this nice light color here. Feel a little bit of sun right here. I just put a little bit of water on my brush. I can go over those shadows, that's no problem. They're easy to cover up. Just a little line right back there. Comes out on an angle like this. Just a little hint right in there. And a little bit more of that color. These structures, the rest of the structure back there. Let's add a bit of a glow to that too. That's a bit too yellow, so I'm going to go in to my white. Just soften that up. A little angle like that, and a little angle like this. Let's make up some more of that color. More white than yellow. A little water on your brush, loosen that up. A little line right there. Line. Just stumble around the edges and we'll lighten this up. Take a bit of our sap green. Make that a little bit darker. And we're going to go carefully, carefully across like that. Placing my finger, my pinky on the painting, making sure it's dry first. I'm going to go right down so I can do this a little bit more steadily and carefully. Now I don't know if that's a bell. I could be wrong. I'm not sure what that is. I'm imagining that it's a bell in there. There's definitely a little something. So a little something that comes out right there. Now I want to go back to my gray. Light, light gray, more white than black. It can be tinted with a little bit of um, 
green or yellow and just put that back in there. Just do a little, little layer of this color. Faintly see some bushes back there. I'm going to use my larger flat brush. So all we're doing is taking a little bit of water on your brush, wiping the excess off on the towel. Okay, so you can see it's really loose. So I'm going to start inside of here and the angle comes down right inside like this and look at already how that is so cool right in there let's do some more you can just line it up in here go quickly back and forth and then maybe we've got some back there too you can barely see we'll line our white up on an angle Isn't that pretty? That was fun and super easy. You guys see, you can definitely do this. Something uplifting to paint. Something that's going to give you a little bit of hope. Something positive and hopeful to paint. Bring you a little bit of comfort. Get your creative juices flowing. being said this painting is all done I want to thank you guys so much again for joining me I hope you got inspired today and learned something new or maybe just enjoyed watching my painting process please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel um, you can also become a part of my artist community over on patreon and I'll leave a link down there below where you can ask me questions if you um, need a little bit of advice or help with anything I answer everybody on there so I'll see you guys very soon next time in a brand new video Bye for now.